just what are your general expectations um, for not just next week, but uh, this season as we stand here today? You know, we've talked a lot about this as a team, playing with a lot of joy, playing with freedom, letting ourselves just be passionate about the game that we learned to play as kids and going for it and really letting the rest take care of itself. And, you know, we're doing that in our practice, we're doing that in our training, and we're expecting to do that with our play as well when we get on the field with an opponent. Did you manage to be able to get outside at all? That's been the beautiful thing. I want to give a shout out to our grounds crew because we had 18 inches of snow on our field on Monday morning and we have been out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and yesterday they even had it topped or Friday and Friday also. Yesterday they even had it top dressed for us. So that was really nice. Pitchers got to throw in the bullpen with dirt underneath their underneath their feet with cleats on. So that was great. Coach, how do you compare the excitement this year and the hype around the program compared to some of the years that you've been well, I've been here 32 years, so that's a long, long lineage of hype and excitement. Um, you, know, you know, every year, I will say this as a coach, when it doesn't feel the same level of excitement every year, it's time to walk away, right? So I know that for the fans, I know the anticipation, uh, just because we've got a veteran lineup, we've had some really significant contributions in in the transfers that have come into our program. So I know that there's a lot of excitement. That, that, that's not lost on us. But I will tell you, for us, what we know that makes us the best is when we stay focused internally and try to be our best every day. But it is exciting. I mean, you can't lie. We're, we're at practice. There's construction going on at our field, and they're trying to accommodate more fans. So it's not like it's invisible to us. So it's, it's going to be a, a really um, exciting season, but we're, we're Mostly excited to take this journey together. I know how time can, sorry, how time consuming is that? You know, with the adding the new stands and so much stuff away from the foot, or sorry, away from the softball field that you have to manage along with your team. Yeah, you know, that's a really great question. There's been a different kind of juggle. I have said many times, I'm glad I'm an experienced coach uh, that has been able to juggle a variety of things. And I just keep saying every day, even with the weather, it's like. We adjust, we adapt, we evolve. And so I think that's what we've done this year is we've been even a little bit delayed in getting out our renewals for season tickets and being in meetings with that and construction timelines and all kinds of things like that. So it's all doable, it's all manageable, but I'm grateful that I have some experience underneath my belt. Speaking of adapting and adjusting, um, the social team hinted that there will be a different role for Abby with her uh, dealing with her injury. Is there any update you can share on that? Abby Squire? Yes. You know, the role off the field is um, business as usual. You know, she was one of our captains last year and did a tremendous job. And I will tell you the way that we, the way that we go about training and trying to develop our leaders, Abby's even a better leader this year than she was a year ago, just simply by the work that she's put in. So, you know, the only thing that she won't be able to do is you know, get out in the outfield and make those diving catches for us or steal that critical base for us or come up with that critical RBI. But she's leading every way she can, and she's really invested and really intent on making a difference on this team, and she already has. I'll give you an example. Uh, every week we try to ask, have one day where we ask a question of the team, and, and one of the weeks it was, you know, who, who's inspired you? Who are you grateful for? Who's called you up this week? And I think it was three or four teammates that named Abby Squire. And she's not even in the thick of practice. So that's all she's doing on the sidelines. So it's great. When I spoke to Abby, uh, she kind of elaborated on the process of how you choose captains or how the team chooses captains. Um, can you go into depth on that? She said there's like a, a leadership training type thing in the summer and then yeah. Th thank you for asking that question. We take a lot of pride. Um, you know, a few years ago, we went through a pretty tough time. And so one of the commitments that came out of that with our coaching staff, our sports psychologists, and our team was that we were going to really work to build a culture that something that could be really strong, sustainable, dynamic, and that it's really player led. So as that culture was written and developed, 100% of all the words in that culture, even as it gets revisited every summer by the leadership group, is 100% written by the student athletes on this team. So player-led, you know, I, I just feel like player-led teams are the best teams, and we really have a responsibility as coaches to then invest in their leadership training.
So then what we do in the summer, and it really starts in the year-end meetings of the year that just finished, in talking to those players who would like to continue to work to develop their leadership and grow in, as leaders because we do training during the summer. And, it's, and, and the thing about it is, it's very, you know, it, it's informal, but it's very intentional. And so, first of all, it's like, do we lead ourselves well? That's the first question. And then we spend a lot of time in the summer discussing the risks, the rewards, and challenges at a very nitty gritty level of leadership, because it's not just about the C on the jersey. Now, with that said, we have also a leadership council, and we have other people that just have naturally born leadership ability. And that's the beauty of this group, is that we're trying to lift up every single leader. And it doesn't matter the title. And, and we try to live that in our program. I don't really even like being called the head coach. I'm one of the coaches. We all have equal roles. And so I'm just not that big into titles. You know, I want to lift people's strengths up. and. Uh, but I think it's important that we have captains because there's some things, just like it's important that you have a head coach, there's some roles only the head coach can do. There's some roles only the captains can do. So I'm, I'm really proud of the group of women that went through and uh, went through that training, but I'm equally as proud of all of the others that are really lifting up their voice and, and giving their heart and soul to this team in, in a leadership fashion. Thank you for the question. With, uh, with Bella Bacon and and Peyton Cody, what can you say about the power that they're going to be able to add to this lineup? They have it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good, I got to laugh. Yes. You know, Bella Bacon, Peyton Cody, I mean, there are, there are a lot of people that are adding lineup, but they adding power to the lineup. But yes, they are two transfers that the ball, if they square up a ball, it can get it can get off or out of the yard in a hurry, but they're not the only two. So we're, we're really excited about our offense. They're doing some really great things. It's, ni it's, it's nice to be outside and see ball flight. It's also going to be really nice to face somebody else's pitching in a few days. Coach, how has Jordy adapted? How has she fit in? And what's the excitement just as a team now as a whole being five mm -hmm. days away from your opener? Well, I think she can probably answer that question better than I, but as from my lens, I think she just, she assimilated immediately. You know, first of all, she's known a lot of these players from childhood. She's played with many of these players and she's coming home. So there's a level of comfort right there. And in that, you know, she just jumped right in. She started school in the summer. She started training with the players. I think that was a really significant time for not only her, but also Bella Bacon did the same thing. And Every one of our returners came back this summer and they spent time together, so they started growing. And I've had so many of our returners and long time, you know, third and fourth year players say, it just feels like Jordy's been here forever. It feels like Bella's been here forever. It feels like Peyton's been here forever. So they've all just done a really nice job and um, I'll look forward to you asking Jordy that question as well. Having said that, Coach, Jordy comes in here with a, with a huge microscope on her. I mean, do you feel the need or have you reminded her like, hey, you don't have to carry us. We got people behind you to back you up. I think Jordy's played at such a high level. I think she understands that and has lived that. Um, what I want her to know from her teammates and her coaches and the greater support staff is that we're all one team and we're all in this thing together and you don't have to shoulder it all yourself. You're going to have a really big role because of the talent that she is and the competitor that she is but you don't have to be more than who you already are. You already more than enough. Coach, what do you hope to see from your team, maybe ahead of the March opener and fans actually getting to see the Huskers in person? Well, we'll have, I don't even know, what is it, three or four tournaments under our belt by that time, playing a really nice schedule, a really competitive schedule. I, I hope that we're, we've hit stride and we're in a rhythm. There are going to be some bumps. We're still working out. Like if I had to write a lineup today, we're still – got a couple positions that they're competing every day, you know? So uh, I, I would think that they're gonna be some really high spots and they're gonna be some spots that we're like, we gotta practice that a little bit more. But the rhythm of competing together and being in that dugout together, I'm, I'm hoping that we're in pretty good stride by the time we hit Bowling Stadium for our first home game. Did you check the forecast in Mexico or what's the, the excitement for the team? Did you check it? It was in the 90s yesterday. Like, we're worried about dehydration and sunburn and all that kind of stuff. Now, it's been in the 60s here this week, but that's still a little bit different. Absolutely.
Coach, you mentioned stadium construction, you know, adding seats and all that. I mean, how much are you looking forward to? I mean, bowling when it when it's filled is already pretty rowdy, but adding these seats and all that. I mean, how much are you looking forward to a real intimidating atmosphere this year at home? You just said it. I, I just hope that people come into Bowling and think, man, this is a really hard place to play. And we're going to try to get these fans for Fan Day really riled up and knowing that they have a part in making that happen, just like they do at PBA or Memorial Stadium or at the Devaney Center or wherever it might be, that they too can make that this for Nebraska softball. When you're in Mexico, or is your team partaking in the, the clinics and the, the, all of the extra fun stuff that goes on down there? Yeah, you know, the, actually, the Thursday that we play, <clears throat> excuse me, that morning we'll have a, I think it's about an hour, an hour and a half a clinic with the community. We did that the last time we were there. And I'll tell you what I love about that so much is that in this program, I, I feel really good to tell you that it's always been more than softball. And we've always been really committed to being in the community. In fact, just a couple nights ago, many of our players went to a nursing home for Valentine's Day. Um, and we, we served at Matt Talbot a couple weeks ago. And it's just a priority in this, in this program. So are our academics. I mean, our GPA was over 3.6 this last semester and as a team. And you know, I just think that when, when you try to balance it out like that, when it does come time for the game and the bright lights come on, you have a little different perspective. And I think perspective gives us all such a better balance in life. And so we're looking forward to that. Uh, with Kaylin Kinney, you know, missing a lot of last year, what's it gonna, what's it going to mean to have her back and ready to go? So. Well, if you think about it, in the fall, we didn't have Kaylin last year, but we didn't have Billy or Kaylin in the fall, and so to put those two bats back in the lineup, I'm going to tell you, it makes a difference, and they're adding some noise to that lineup. So to have them both back is really great. To have Kaylin back in the circle is great. Um, I think she's hungry. But I'm, I'm going to tell you what, that young woman did not take a day off, not one day off. She crosses every eye and crosses every, yeah, she does all that. <laughs> she does all the things that need to be done with all the alphabet. Coach, you couldn't help but notice I uh, talked about the bats. There's a lot more arms on the roster this year. Uh, struggling through with two last year, to, yeah. was there a decided effort to not or have that happen again? Well, sometimes that, that wasn't the intent last year, but when <laughs> Kaylin breaks her hand at, in game one, uh, you know, it, it makes it a little bit of a challenge. I will tell you, Lori Sipple, if she were standing here in front of you, she is as excited as I've ever seen her. That she feels like she has a really good pitching staff with a lot of different skill sets. There's, a, the, you know, there's where one pitcher where one pitcher is solid in this strength and other pitchers solid in another strength. So it's really exciting to think about putting a staff together. I mean, we have a lefty for the first time and I can't even remember how long. So that's, that's pretty nice to have that featured as well. Is there a plan on how you want to use the, all the arms in the beginning of the season? Is it sharing innings? Is it? You know, um, I, I've been asked that question a lot, and I, I think you get in the heat of the you, – you keep, you keep the long game in mind, but you've got to play the game in front of you. And I think we have great communication and great trust on our pitching staff, and I think there will be a lot of dialogue that goes into that. And I think we'll play it game by game, week by week. So no is the answer, but I also have enough wisdom to know that I can't keep the big picture in mind. I know your focus is very much on your team, but with a milestone like a thousand wins coming up, uh, do you have any thoughts on that legacy, that sort of thing? That's an amazing number. Well, I think that one happened already. Did it? Yeah, I think so. So uh, if if it didn't, we should have not celebrated it. <laughs> you, you know. Uh, here's the thing: Ron Ravel hasn't done one thing to win a game, right? So. Those are all nice, and I don't want to discount that because it means that the team is having success. But I'll tell you what gives me my greatest joy is um, when a milestone like that happens and the pictures that get taken because your team cuddles in by you to get a photograph taken. Like that, that's what I, like when I look at those photographs, it's not what it, why we did that, it's what I felt when we did that. Coach, you've received a lot of recognition in a lot of the polls. I believe you guys are ranked 18th in the coaches' polls. How do you, coming off a tournament appearance, 
just continue to manage those expectations and deal with maybe a little bit more pressure in that number alongside the name? Another great question, and thank you for asking that, because that's real, right? We just have to normalize that that's real. You know, we, we, uh, the, Matt tipped me off when the first poll came out the day before that it was going to come out, and the only thing that we said, the only thing we've said as a team is that night after practice, I said, the noise is going to start tomorrow, you'll understand tomorrow. Our focus is to stay right where we are. You're in a great place. We're focusing inward. And you just know the noise is going to happen. And then we, we've been working, and it'll be a work in progress, on how to quiet the noise, because it's a challenge. And we love the hype. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. You're going you're gonna to hear it again at Fan Day. But yet the people that have to roll up their sleeves and do the work, as you know, in order to do your job well, you have to kind of quiet yourself and do a lot of work. <laughs> and so. We're, we are the people that have to quiet ourselves to do a lot of work to make the hype continue and make it real. And so that's what we're really focused on. And, but yeah, I mean, I, I, is it more pressure? If you let it be. But if you don't focus on it, then you just keep moving. And so far, that's what we're doing. Anything else for Coach? One more, I promise. Uh, <laughs> is there a plan for Jordy when she's not mm. pitching? Well, she ice baths every morning. No. <laughs> Again, uh, you know what? Here's what I'll tell you. She's a great athlete, she's a great competitor, and we want to win. So all of those things will factor in to our decision making. Fair enough? <laughs>